Uh, welcome to the uh, Big Creek Township Board of Zoning Appeals meeting for this evening. And uh, what I'd like to do is call the meeting to order, but I would uh, ask for a roll call of the, the attendees. Okay. Go right. Mm -hmm. Mr. Martinsek? Uh, present. Mr. Hamrich? Here. Mr. Huntsman? Here. Mr. Thomas? Here. Mr. Pete? Here. Okay. The way this works is that uh, you have a full board tonight, so we're able to hear the case. We ask anyone who wishes to present the case or speak for it, go to the podium, and there's a little affirmation that you read into the record, because this is a quasi-judicial uh, hearing tonight or meeting tonight. After the person speaks for the case and anyone else that wishes, wishes to speak for the case, they will testify. Then we will ask for a testimony uh, against or neutral comments. After that, we will close the public portion of the hearing and then debate it amongst ourselves in order to rule on the case. So, uh, do you wish to read what our first case is this evening? Yes, thank you, Board. So, uh, before you is case 851. Um, the purpose of this hearing is that the Board of Zoning Appeals may review and act on a variance request made by the property owner, Matthew Shoemaker. Uh, the nature of the request is to seek a variance from the requirement that no fence shall exceed a height of three feet when located in a required front yard setback. The applicant is seeking a variance from the requirements of Articles 18.062. Uh, um, the property is located at 2812 River Oaks Court in the unincorporated area of Beaver Creek Township and is zoned residential plan new development and the parcel ID is B03001. 00220016900. Um, our staff reports. You, do you have a staff report? Actually, our public hearing notice will serve as our staff report. We have no issues with this. Our, our recommendation is to approve the uh, variance request. Okay, thank you. Uh, with that stated, is there someone wishing to present the case this evening? Okay. If you uh, go to the podium and uh, read the affirmation. Just a moment. I'm Matthew Shoemaker of 2012 River Oaks Court, Virginia, Ohio. So I'm swear that the statements I am about to make before the Creek Township Board of Zoning Appeals are the truth to the best of my knowledge and belief. Thank you. Okay. Go ahead and present what's your, what's your uh, the logic behind it here. The logic behind it. Um, so, um, like like many people, uh, I have a large dog. Uh, he's a boxer pointer mix. So a three foot fence extended uh, outside of the side of my yard would be too short necessarily to keep him in the yard. Uh, he's actually jumped a three foot fence back in the day. Um, so for the safety of the neighborhood, keeping our dog in the uh, in our lot, a fourth fence would be necessary. Also, uh, having the fence inside of the, uh, the structure would really limit our usage of the lot. Um, we wouldn't be able to use a lot of the space. There's a large side lot, and it would really be taking away from our ability to use our yard uh, in that way. And lastly, it, keep, it maintains the aesthetic of the neighborhood. Um, the lot behind us has an extension off of their house uh, pushing out the 12 feet. Um, so we would be looking to match that, so keep the aesthetic of the neighborhood. To keep it nice. Um, do we have a, a aerial photo? Yeah. Let me give you the plot plan here. Unfortunately, the GIS picture has not been updated. It's just an empty lot on oh, the GIS. No, it's not an empty so lot. we're going to use the plot plan from when the house was um, when the permit was issued for the house. Okay. So, just a couple of points to note. This red line indicates the proposed fence. This is their house. There is a 25 foot building setback here and then <coughs> here as well. So it would extend, because it's a corner lot, it would extend, you know, roughly 10, 8 to 10 feet into the front yard setback. 
and that's why they require a variance. And it's only 25 to begin with? Yeah, the front yard uh, setback is 25 feet, um, which is here. And how far is it going to extend? Uh, I'm sorry, uh, it's hard to read. Yeah, 25 feet. And it will yeah, extend, extend 10 feet. thank you, 10 feet. Or it would be 11 feet, there's it's a 26 foot. Oh, so it's one foot. 15 feet is the utility easement. So it would be extending to uh, inside that utility easement. Okay. What's the distance from the fence to the to the sidewalk? Sent fence to the sidewalk? Right, um, this distance. It would be the, it would, I'm guessing it's, it's, it's essentially 25 feet because they're putting it right at the at the building or I'm sorry um, 15 feet 15 feet yeah, yes okay. to, to the sidewalk uh, actually a little less because it's going to be 11 or so so, so, so so basically you're 10 feet from the house yeah it's so an that's easier way to see yeah, yeah. yes. away from the house thank you that makes it easier 11 it was, it's actually 11 feet because 15 26 feet was the actual setback so Oh, okay, so yeah, the house it's was six. It's eleven feet, and then fifteen feet would be the utility easement that is no, covered. Twenty-three. So your house is set one foot yeah. behind the setback line. Gotcha. All right. What's what? What's the twenty-six? Yeah, that's, that's a twenty-six right there. Yeah, and from here. This is twenty-six. Place it here. Yeah. 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 From the sidewalk. Yeah, the concrete sidewalk. sidewalk. Yeah. So would the easement go to the sidewalk or the curb of the house? You know, that the setback. The easement. The setback for the house building. Yes, the curb of the house. it Goes starts it. here. The setback line starts here. The Is that the sidewalk? Yes, that's the edge of the sidewalk. It starts at the sidewalk. Correct. Huh. Okay. I thought it was the curb. No, your your building setback line starts. This is this is all right away here. All anything behind the, this is right away. And this is his property. Okay. Okay. And the and the style of fence is as indicated here. As indicated there, that's going to be the style of fence. Yes. It will be a. Aluminum, aluminum, black rails, okay. see through, relatively. Okay. And there's another one like that near you, right? Right, behind. Right, right behind us. They have the, the same distance off the house, and so it would be matching. The uh, fences are going to line up. The, yep, they'll, they'll line up. They're not going to be touching. Those yeah, things, so line, in line. line. Yeah. Okay. So the uh, question for you, Matt, uh, while I'm thinking about it, the house that he's referring to is behind him. Have they been brought in here for a? Yes. They have? Yeah, yes. I think, yes, we did that. This yeah. one? We did that one? We did that one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was pretty recent, if I remember correctly. Okay, it was. Yeah. 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 We also did one across the street, didn't we? Well, you guys did at one, the you guys did one at the entrance. Yeah, correct. okay, yeah. okay. But well, we did this other one after that. All right, yeah. okay. Okay. So it's gonna be the same, it's gonna be in line with that fence. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. The applicant. Uh, the, uh, the the fence that you're going to use is it going to have spiked tops or is it going to be flat or what are they flat going to be? Tops. No flat tops. Flat yeah, flat. Okay. You don't want to find your dog hanging on it. Yeah, I don't either. <laughs> okay. For a kid. Okay. Yep. So right. it'll be uh, flat like the picture. Yep. Okay. Yep, like the picture. All right. That that's the picture the the um, fence company. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Is there anyone else wish, wish, wishing to speak for the applicant tonight? Please. I, Joshua Keaton of 156 Richmond Trails, Eno, Ohio, solemnly swear that the statements I'm about to make before the Beaver Creek Township, Township Board of Zoning Appeals are the truth to the best of my knowledge and belief. Um, I am the residence directly behind okay. the applicant here. 
Uh, I was here recently, so yes, you <laughs> yeah. So everything is going to mirror what what we approved, what was approved for my fence, uh, minus the style of fence. So um, everything I said will mirror. I believe all the issues have been met, looked at, and addressed. So uh, again, I'm just here to voice the support and say that what we've done, what was approved before, is essentially what is going on here. So mm -hmm. I think it looks good. Well, I appreciate it. Is there, is there any problem with maintenance? You know, do you mowing the, the lawn to, uh, on both sides of it? I haven't noticed any yet. Oh, okay. I don't have to. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No, I think we should be good. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, you go to the, you're right. You got to answer that first. Yeah. Yeah. I think Max's question more for you. Um, the other lot line. There's a dotted line there. Is that the uh, setback line for that lot? Uh, I believe this would represent a utility easement. Um, let me. I'm, I'm going to look at this because it's hard to see up there. But okay. The, but that that's also going to be where it needs to be, right? Actually, feet off the property line or whatever. Five feet. What is it in that? Those line? appear to maybe be topography lines, from what I can see. Oh, okay. um, yeah, these are topography lines. Those dotted. Yeah, black these lines? dashed lines right here okay. are topography lines. Okay. Is there a bit of a drop off uh, at that piece of the property or through the through there? Yeah. So there's a kind of a grade so that goes so down through my good. lot. Okay. So this, that's kind of showing the grade as it moves down. Um, so it actually kind of creates a swale in between the lots so that the water can flow through the middle there. It's not going to be in that swale at all, right? Okay, because that's not allowed. Right. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Be that's, that was set, a new. Set in the mind. Well, yeah, that's a new. Uh, so that okay. actually was repealed. Unfortunately. It was. Yes, it was. <laughs> Building fences down in the swales and stuff. They repeal it. <laughs> it's nice to know that. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, that what is what is the approximate distance there on the uh, what is it the uh, east side? What I call it the east side. Mm -hmm. yeah, what is the distance to the property line, would you say? I would say two feet, um, just looking at the line. Two feet? Um, a couple of feet. Yeah. 18 feet. And fences being? Sorry. Um, Take me right to up the plot, To the lot line going off of the plan of providing you. you, you that's that's right. right. You can go right to the Yeah, yeah. Right. 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 Okay. okay. In the back All right. Here, not in front of yeah. 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 Okay. Trust me. Okay. okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're right. Thank you. Thanks. Is there anyone else wishing to speak for or against the application in the case? Not hearing any other uh, testimony, we'll go ahead and close the public portion. Hey, Gentlemen? It lines up with the other one that we approved. <laughs> yeah. three, three, four months ago, I don't know exactly what it was. That would be Somewhere yeah. around there. Yeah. 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 I, I think that's one thing I do like is, is the fact that he's trying to stay Consistent, it's consistent throughout the neighborhood. The neighborhood, I think it's really nice. The only thing I want to say about the subject is, many, many meetings ago, Don Crick was here, the attorney, and I said, "I want to set up a precedence." No, no, we don't set any precedences. Sure. We're setting precedences, folks, sure. because we let the neighbor do it. Now he's in here wanting to do it with the neighbor speaking for him, so it's now. Well, you let him do it, why can't I do it? So just keep that in the back of your mind mm -hmm. that we are, in essence, setting the precedence. The, the whole neighborhood can do this. Well, the, yeah, and they, they have been. Yeah. Okay, they have been. Yeah. The, the case that we had before his uh, was the one on the corner with the safety, with the solid Correct. Things. And that, that, I, you know, that. The slight distance problem, yeah, all that, yeah, it hasn't that, been changed. It hasn't. No, it has not. No, it hasn't. They haven't touched it. So it almost feel like we're spinning our wheels here sometimes. Hmm. Max, I want to ask you, if we're going to continue approving four-foot fences and front yard setbacks, why don't we change the zoning code and quit wasting everybody's time? It's no reflection on you guys. No, I, that's, uh, that's not an inappropriate question. It's one of the many things that we're doing in the omnibus update is changing a lot of these things. I will okay. tell you that the last three months or so, we've had a lot of these, but in my time before that, I don't 
know that we've maybe had but one right. in that entire year. So right. the, it is recent that okay. we've seen a lot of this. Not to say it's not something we're considering. Right. Um, you know, I think leaving it as as is allows you to look at it on a case by case basis and determine, like for instance, this one, the fence is on the far side from the corner. In other in other corner lot configurations, they might be wanting to put a four foot fence right yeah. up at the front of the corner, and that would have a much more right. You know, okay. Yeah. So okay, there's sides to, or I guess there's you could see both sides. I yeah, but I can guarantee you, folks, that if we had told this fella, now we're not going to approve this. He would be happy that we approve the neighbor. <laughs> oh no, to the north. Oh no, 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 no. If we yeah. decided the yeah. says no. Yeah. So, but I also think we are setting precedent here. Yeah, there, there's nothing wrong with this one. No, that is different from the one before. I know it's precedent. I know. And, and unless there's some objection, why you wouldn't do this one? I, I, I don't see a reason not to. It's, no, no, we're talking about one foot. Yeah, no, about. no, no. I, I, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just talking amongst us about the precedents that we yeah. supposedly don't set. <laughs> Again, I, that would do. The key is the fact that all of them are dealing with corner lots. So it's not necessarily changing what is said about the front. Maybe it's redefining what a corner lot is, what is considered the true front yard of a corner lot. I understand. I'll, I'll yeah. say one thing. But when you buy Both a house. Of these corner lots, when you have two corner lots backed up to each other, the other side really doesn't look much like a front yard. It, it really doesn't. But when, you, when you're buying a house and you're buying a house on a corner lot, you know, you better know that there's two front yard setbacks to a corner well, lot. You weren't here the last time, Leo. It happens brought up, and I guarantee you, most of the people when they buy a corner lot are not aware that they're considered two front lots. Well, that's the that's their fault, not mine. Well, I, I'm just telling you that's the fact. Because it's on the drawings. How many people is buying a house? Uh, if I'm say, if I'm buying a lot, John, I'm going to look at the drawing of it to see. You're. You're different. You, you come see? with a different kind of approach. <laughs> yes. All right. You've got a different experience level that's a lot of people. I'm just saying, corner lots have all kinds of restrictions yes, they compared do. to any other kind of lot or shape in this city in yes, the township. They do. I and, not disagree with that. Uh, not too many people well, don't know that. Yeah. But anyway. Going going back to this, is there any poison pills that yeah, the no. Hit, uh, no. okay. No, the poison pill is what I was talking to you guys about. It has right. to do with the applicant. Okay. For the situation here. I'm just saying that. Yeah, it's so noted. Yeah. And, and it's true. And it's true. Well, no. if there's no, I have no nothing else. If there's no more discussion, I'll take a motion. Anybody? I'll make a motion to approve. Okay. As uh, submitted. Uh, case number 851 with no conditions. I second. Okay. Motion's been made, seconded. No other discussion on the motion needed. No. Call for a vote. Mr. Martinsek? Yes. Mr. Hemrich? Yes. Mr. Huntsman? Yes. Mr. Thomas? Yes. Mr. Peed? Yes. Thank you, board. So very quickly, since you were approved, what we're going to do is we're going to have you and the chair sign this document that basically uh, it lets you know that you were approved. Um, I will then write up a resolution once that's signed by the chair here probably tomorrow or Friday. We'll be able to email you a copy of that. But essentially, you can go start building your fence. Um, one thing I will ask you to do, I think you submitted a fence application. Is that correct? An, an actual application for a fence permit? Right, I, you said I had to submit that, get yes. this approved, and then submit the yeah. So what we're going to do is we're just going to have, we're going to have you call Lori tomorrow, make sure that she processes that permit and actually issues the permit. It'll say there's a space on there that references your BZA case, and so we can process it. Then you can go ahead and do it. I've signed this real quick. Thank you so much. No, we. Uh, we this. 
just leave it in there. In a short period of time. Well, we don't set precedents. Pete and I probably fences. Probably what? I don't think. Thirty. Oh, I'm sure of it. Absolutely sure. He does it. Yes, this house could have been built on that. Yeah. Yeah. So, could have. Could have so if the house would be lower, it's really right, we'd be right behind it. Oh, oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. So we need to move the house. <laughs> but you know, had to move the bottom. <laughs> move. Okay. It could be done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You had your experience on yeah. something like that. Yep. I saw a movie once where they just attached a bunch of balloons to one. Yeah. Like right on it. <laughs> All right. Problem is, it pull it upstairs off and leave the bottom. <laughs> You guys are all set. You're welcome to stay. You're welcome to go. Yeah, I figured as much. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. All right. Okay. Uh, thank you for your patience. And uh, would you want to read the uh, announcement for KC 852? <laughs> Thank you, Board. Uh, okay, the purpose of this hearing, case number 852, is so that the Board of Zoning Appeals may review and act on the variance request made by Sarah and John Fay with the consent of the property owner, Marcus Ferguson. Now, that part, I believe, is no longer relevant. You own the property now, is that correct? Okay. Uh, the nature of the request is to seek a variance from the requirement that no fence shall exceed a height of three feet when located in a required front yard setback. The applicant is seeking a variance from the requirements of Article 18.062. And it's, the property is located at 1410 Bareback Trail in the unincorporated area of Beaver Creek Township. It's a residential plan unit yeah. development. Yeah. And the par parcel ID is B03002032003352. Um, again, our public hearing notice serves as our staff report. We have no issues with this, and we recommend approval of the, uh, of the variance. Okay, thank you. You know, um, yeah. Who, who, who wishes to present it? Please. I, Sarah Fay, uh, of 14 Bulldog Trail, of Beaver Creek, Ohio, solemnly swear that the statements I am about to make before the Beaver Creek Township Board of Zoning Appeals are the truth to the best of my knowledge and belief. Thank you. We are asking for a one foot variance. Um, on our fence, we have two German Shepherds uh, who are both pretty big, and for their safety and for the safety of those around us, we would ask that we get a four foot, three foot uh, is just about the top of our dog's head, so we just wanted that extra foot to ensure that they wouldn't be able to get out. Um, we are also expecting our first child in December, so as part of that, we would love to have a yard for her to play in, mm -hmm. um, and as having that fence just gives us a little added security that she's not going anywhere. Um, we are asking to use a black aluminum fence, so flat on top, so that it, it can be seen through. And we have noticed in the neighborhood there are quite a few similar plots that have that same style of fence mm -hmm. and that four foot height, so it would be congruent with the rest of our um, HOA and neighborhood. Okay. Okay. And uh, is there any request to set it differently? You know, any additional setbacks? It's just the height that you're requesting? Yes. Okay. Okay, I want to be sure. Yeah. Yes, uh, we had talked about, you know, if we have to go back the, was it 36 feet? Uh, well, so our, our rule is that it has to be at least 12 feet from the edge of the curb. Uh -huh. And this would be 18 feet. 
Well, you were, what? You're What's saying the setbacks? Curve the street. So okay. Yes. Okay, because yes. that's. There's no sidewalks. So what, yeah. Again, yeah, sidewalks. I want to understand so that's exactly. exactly. What, what are right? they asking for? Yeah, I see what you're saying. I'm sorry. Yeah. What is the setback they're asking for? Okay, so they are asking for a. They're not asking for a variance on their setback. It is. They are asking for a variance on their height within their front yard setback. The fence location distance from the curb is within code requirements. It doesn't require. Wait a minute. Now we're going from the curb. That's yeah. yes. We not measure our, our resolution. Yeah. No. Not this. Our resolution says that the fence distance has to be at least 12 feet from any curb. So the edge of the street, if the street's curb and gutter, if it's not curb and gutter, it has to be 25 feet from the center line of the road. So since this is curb and gutter, it has to be at least 12 feet from here, and you said it was 18 feet, is that correct? What? It's it's actually 18 feet, so it's six feet farther away than it needs to be to the curb. Wait a minute, we're, we're... go ahead and finish your <laughs> presentation. That was really all I had. Those are our main reasons, our dogs, and then our future child. Um, okay. Having that, buying the land, we were hoping to you know get that big of a yard out of it. Um, and we just feel it would be for the safety of everyone around us. Okay. Did, did you say it's going to be an aluminum similar to the, the one? Exactly the same, I believe. Okay. Yes. Is that all the way around the yard or just yes. the? All the way around. Okay. With the green. Okay. Yes. No, I understand. Minus, that so type of fence all the way around. Yeah. The front yes, sir. Yeah. So okay. it wouldn't even go to that front corner of the house. It would go to the back corner. So there. four feet all the way around? Or are you going to go to jump up to six? No? Four feet all the way around. Okay. okay. The only question I have is. Going on to your upper fence, which is uh, right next to your neighbor's yard. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see they've got a fence up there also. What's the spacing between the two fences are going to be? Our plan was to have three feet between the two, so a foot and a half onto our property line, and his privacy fence is a foot and a half onto uh, his. Is that going to be a no man's land, or are they? I'm just worried about it being properly maintained. I would assume that's something that we would talk to him about. I had a conversation with him before he moved in two weeks ago, and we had talked about making sure it's big enough for a mower right. uh, and making sure that one of us is mowing it. That, that would be a great case if the fence was on the line and we didn't have this space. <laughs> or, or how about just <laughs> really? see if he's willing to let you bring your fence just, right to I his and not have any fence across there. Oh, I, 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 I asked if he would be willing to let And nobody takes it. care of him. Uh, and he said he would not. That oh, someone okay. before had, because that would cut our fencing cost at about. Oh well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but he said that someone had done that previously to an old fence, and he just built this new privacy fence, and didn't trust <laughs> anyone to tie into it. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Neighbors used to share the cost. Oh yeah, without a doubt. Well, but so we'll it's it's a foot and a half in on this property, so I know. neighbor wouldn't share the cost. Can't do it now. So mm -hmm. that's right. Okay. All right. Um, that's all I got for God. at the moment. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh -huh. Okay. Max? Yes. Where Do you is. Want to say anything more about it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. It's a good idea. Okay. Right. Well, seeing that there's. And, and unless one of you people would like to speak against it, I don't think so, but uh, we'll go ahead and close the public portion and uh, discuss it amongst ourselves. I don't think there's a whole lot to discuss. I'm a little confused. Well, I think there is. Well, okay. I'm a little confused. Well, on the 12 foot. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. He's saying 12 foot from the street curb. Yeah. That would put it just next to the sidewalk is yeah. where that would put it. That's correct. I think against the sidewalk. That's where it'd be. Yeah. Yeah. Now, wait a minute. We just had a case where we we didn't. Yeah. We we started on the inside of the sidewalk. All right. Yeah. What's the difference? What's the difference? The di okay. They are both within their front yard building setback, which is 25 feet from the edge of the sidewalk in, in this neighborhood. It's 25 feet on both sides here. Well, how's your, that corner lot has a 25 foot build line? Yes. They could have put their well, house. You said they could have put it by the sidewalk. They could have put their house right up. They could have moved their house forward if they wanted to, yes. But then okay. again, they've pushed right up against the the building envelope or the setback so, line. So why don't we have any drawings of that lot with the setback lines on it? We can bring those up for you. Hold on just a moment. 
Oh, that's the, hold on. I have a real hard with a fence that, that far out. I mean, that's just, look what it does to the poor neighbor. Well. He's got to back clear out and over the sidewalk before he can even see down the street. There's other fences there that aren't privacy. But it's not privacy, that's true. Mm -hmm. No, I don't mean that, but there's, there's some fences down the street. They didn't put them next to the sidewalk. And I don't think it should be either. I no, think, I, I think that is. makes it look worse. I can't hear back. I, I just find it hard to believe that the setback is off you have no, on the inside of the edge of the sidewalk. Do you know how far off the sidewalk you plan to be? Uh, it's about, I think, six feet or more. About six feet or more. Yeah, if, it's, if it's 18 it's feet. Far back from there's the a house right across the street from them. Can you pull yeah. that up? This house. Uh, on bareback. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And actually. With the fence right out of the. Yes. And they, like and on the sidewalk. So let me just be clear. I went out and measured that fence today. It's farther than 12 feet away from the curb. It's only three feet tall. So it is, tall. it is in fact a completely conforming conforming fence. Yes. Okay. Um, because it's, it's in the front. Correct. Because it's in the front yard. It has to be three feet tall. If, right. And that's the only difference at, between front yards and any other part of the yard is the height allowable. The fence on the uh, that house on the other corner, right there. This one. Yeah. Yes. Now, I think fence. that fence is taller than three feet. And I, I went out and measured it. It is 12 feet inside of the sidewalk. It's it's not, you know, and by being in further, it makes it not look so bad. That's one issue, I think. And there's another one down the end has a white picket fence all the way down the end. I don't know if you get to it. Let's see. There it is. Right there. See how far in that is? Yeah. I think it's less likely to get hit by bicycles if it's a little farther in on the, in the yard. Also, they don't go down along with their bike and True. run a stick all down it, you know, True. scratch well, it all up. Well, the applicant in this case, uh, she just stated that it's going to be six feet in from the sidewalk. And that's that green line, I believe, that was right. being shown. Yeah. yeah, that was about that wide. Yeah. 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 That's so that that looks to be more than six feet, but it, you're saying around six feet is what you what you'd like to do? Yeah, we the only reason it was even at that point was because of those two trees. There's two trees, and we wanted those to be in the fence and wanted to back it off just a little bit so that we weren't hitting roots. But it is pretty far from the sidewalk. Okay. To be honest, we didn't want our dogs right up against the sidewalk. No, no. And we were trying to be thoughtful of the line of sight on the street. Well, it's going to be a see-through fence, so yeah. if it was a solid fence, I'd have a real issue with yeah. it being out that far with the neighbor, but since it's a see-through, that makes it a little better. So let me ask you this, are you planning on your fence being set back from the sidewalk the same distance as your neighbor across yeah. the street? Or are you going to be not as much? It yeah, won't be as much. Be half? Half the distance. It'll be about half, yeah. Yep, half. So we're talking six feet and that one's about 12 you said? I managed it. It's 12 feet off the sidewalk. You come at 40 feet if you made that. And part of that was because 34. of the tree placement. The what? The tree placement. Those trees are placed really inconveniently there. Um, there's one, the big one there, and then there's a smaller one by the end near the fence. Um, yeah, so they're. So, how close are you going to be to the tree if, as it's drawn? 50 feet off. I don't remember that exact measurement, but when our contractor came out to give us the measurements, we asked would it be a safe distance to be able to, to put the fence in where the trees and have them inside. Have you had any input from your neighbor? We talked to both neighbors and they were fine with it. But when I asked to tie in the house to the left, we asked if we could tie in and she was okay with it. You can see that small section in the back we decided not to tie in since the other side asked us not to, but both were very happy with us putting in a fence. 
So there is a fence between you and the people to the left? Yeah, this um, right here, that small little section. Yep. Just right here. Oh, just that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So it didn't seem worth it to tie into them that. Yeah. Right. But both of them approved having a fence. Okay. I thought maybe you were saying come all the way out. Mm -hmm. Okay. I wish. Last case, yeah, where it was measured from. I'm, yeah. I'm a little confused because yeah. of what was said the last case. I, 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 I the last case was 25 foot for some reason. What, why, why is it? Why are we coming from a different? All right. May I try and shed some light yeah. on the confusion? And I apologize if I was in any way responsible for it. But so there's a couple different rules for fences. Okay. One of them is that they have to be at least 12 feet from the curb the edge of the street essentially this one is by a long shot it's 26 and then another roughly 12 is usually about this distance here so it's about 38 feet so it is in no way shape or form close to coming to that variance it doesn't need the variance because See, it's far enough away that's where the confusion came because you you gave us two different locations. You said you made from the sidewalk. And you said the, the sidewalk, and then you said from the That's street. Then it you should be the, the curb on both of them, correct? Yeah, it should be. Well, okay. And it was so a question. He quest yeah. Someone questioned him on on and where it measured from, and he said, "Oh, from the inside of the sidewalk." Yeah. It was the final. It, it was confusing. It, on what it, was the there. front yard setback okay. is measured from the edge of the sidewalk here, because the. Okay. person's property begins at this line at the edge of the sidewalk. This is all right away. It's owned by the township. No, well, or, the I mean, right away is they own the sidewalk and they own the strip of land. It's So if the sidewalk is taxed on, who pays to fix the sidewalk? It, they do. That's who owns the sidewalk. Okay. That's exactly right. It's yeah. not listed under their ownership in the GIS, so forgive me if I'm giving yeah, you that. But Good. if you look here, you'll see their property line starts at the edge of the sidewalk, okay? So their building setback, their front yard setback is 25 feet from this point in, from the edge of the sidewalk in. Well, now who has to cut the grass between the sidewalk and the street? They do. Why? It's not their property. If, I don't I buy think it. you are getting outside of the realm of the what the BZA can accomplish because that's the issue of whether or not the sidewalk and that easement line is their property or not is fought at the Supreme Court level, not here. It's, it's got to be. I need a better clarification because I have to agree with, with I believe everybody on the board. Let's, let's, not, let's just take no house or anything. I buy a lot and I look at the lot. My lot goes from the back all the way, or starts from the curb, I go from the and that's where it's street. measured from. I own, I own it. You know, the but street I trees, replaced. I've been told, right. the street trees had to be replaced. I have to replace them. Your lot. It's not the, not the township. Now, are, do you live in a planned yeah. unit development? Okay. Because that could be different. Which one, may I ask? Because it could be different in each one. It could be a non curb and gutter, in which case oh, you would it? own all the way up to the street. Yeah. I live in Soham Village. Okay. okay. Now, get, I don't care. I don't think it should make any difference where, and, and you're absolutely right, this is taking up their Sorry. time, and uh, it, but it's something that I think we need a clarification uh, for future if somebody is wants to have a, a setback or uh, come forward on the fence. How, how about we do this? Let's go ahead and finish this. I think so. And then we'll go into discussion. yeah discussion can, afterwards. Can you uh, bring that to the left, that picture, please? Over here. Other way. Sorry. Go back just a little bit. I want, I want the tree to be, okay. You're looking at the comparison of the tree to distance in. I'm wondering if the heartache seems to be with me, and I think a lot of you, is it's too darn close to the sidewalk. Even though the neighbor's got a three foot fence all the way out to the sidewalk. But here's the thing, Leo. It, 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 the only thing that we can we can disapprove is the the height. 
We can put conditions on that. I disagree. No. no. If they want to put a three foot fence, they can go right now and put a three foot yes, fence there. And yeah, three foot. I agree. Right along the sidewalk. But, but if we approve a four foot, we can, we can put a condition say it has that. to be 12 feet from the sidewalk. I'm not sure about that because, because they're staying within the approved uh, uh, code. They're staying no, they're not. They're wanting the variance for a height. For a height variance, not a, a distance variance. That's right. That's why I asked the question to start, because that's the only thing we can act upon is something that's in the application. Absolutely. So that's why the, I, the only saving grace about the whole thing right now is the fact that it's a see through fence. It's a see through fence. If this if this was a privacy fence, solid four foot privacy fence, fence, if you yeah. want to call it that, solid yeah. fence, I would say absolutely no way. That close. That yeah. close. Yeah. I don't care if everybody in the neighborhood. But <clears throat> that's that's the only saving grace at this moment is that we need to put that condition on that it will be the aluminum painted yep. fence. But that's okay. submitted. That's submitted. That's submitted. That's submitted. That's submitted. Okay. submitted. Yeah, because they, they put in there six feet, I think, from the sidewalk or something like that. She, she so thought it would be about six feet. Yeah, it's 18 feet from the curb. So if we approve a high thing, couldn't they move it back out to the sidewalk? If we're only changing the height. No, that that's the only variance you're in here for. Yeah, that, that's the so only yeah, thing. They so they could put it right to the sidewalk. Unless we condition it. Uh, well, no, 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 wait, 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 wait. Let, let him speak. Uh, I need to call Don to decide whether or not one of those situations is correct. But if I were to guess, like if I were to guess what Don would say, it would be that if you approve this as submitted, you've approved this site plan, essentially. You've approved this specific variant. Including right. the distance away from the which street. is the six foot. Right. right. So we, don't, which, we don't have that on. We don't have that in the application. In the application, do we? We uh, just have it'll you, be about. You six have feet. the. Right. You have this drawing. No. That is submitted. So can we? we have, can we make a motion to approve the height of four feet and a condition that it's, as the applicant stated, at least six feet yeah. from the sidewalk. I don't see why not, but well, I'm not the person to make that yeah, final decision. Well, okay. Uh, from previous cases, she testified that is the location which where they're going to put it, so it goes in the official record, yeah. and that is what we're going to approve. As submitted. As submitted. And that measurement that I took for sure on the GIS system that I did was at 18 feet from the curb. Okay. Okay. So that was the measurement I used, and I know for sure. Good. Okay. And we had our contractor measure. Okay, and also uh, Bellbrook, uh, Bellbrook Fence learned about, or uh, not Bellbrook Fence, the pool company, learned a valuable lesson to not lay out a fence by the GIS, correct? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, be very careful. So, uh, but, but it was a real mess. So, it was a swimming pool that they had to move. Yes. Because they laid it out with the GIS, and it was on the golf course's property. The lines were wrong. Yeah. So, what I'm getting at is the GIS is not very accurate. When you go to lay your fence out, Leo, to try to or whatever get, it's worth. Try to get back on what you're. I can see where you're coming from. If we're sitting here, and let's say it was a privacy fence, and it was good with four foot versus right, and so we approve it by what their location is. If if they moved it, we may not have approved that high of a fence or height if it was closer to the. Correct. So I th I think if we would sit down there. You know, as approved with a distance, I think makes all the sense in the world that we'd be able to do that. Right, and it was testified that that is what their that yeah, their intent. Absolutely, absolutely, we're just we're codifying it. Right, by absolutely. putting a condition on there, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. I think too. Well, well, it, no, no. <laughs> you don't have to put it just just no. as, just as uh, yeah as, as submitted. As, yeah, as submitted and testified. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It says, where does it say six feet from the sidewalk? It doesn't. 
It is not on the drawing, the distance from the sidewalk to the... And it's, and it's not written out in the all application says it's at all. it's going to be further 12 feet. But, it's, it's, but it's all... But it's been be test, uh, be testified to, and it should be in the notes that we would have to prove. It is in record, yes. And I apologize for not including that on the GIS print. I sent it in the email when I sent the plot one email. And there is no, there is no section on the application to list exactly how far from the curb. So unfortunately, it's not recorded on the application. So we would have to use the testimony tonight as the. Are there no, are there no uh, plot drawings on file with you folks? There are. There's okay. plot drawings. Okay. Yeah. That would, would like show to see everything the, we need, right? You, would you like to see the plot drawing? Of the lot? Sure. Okay. So this saw. is the record plan for the neighborhood. Okay. This is lot. Two, I think that said 285. Is that right? Have you learned a valuable lesson about pointer lots? <laughs> 285. <laughs> we knew when we were buying it, we were, <laughs> what we were getting into, we were just. Please, you're honest. Just about that. Yeah, no, we did the research before right. we bought the house. Right. We had hoped to have this before we bought the house for right. the closing date got moved up. Right. We were actually going to make it contingent on oh, I see. getting the approval, but I see. the market is very difficult. Right. And her right. is due in two months. So oh, yeah. kind of pulled the trigger and Yeah, we gotta get moving here. Yeah. Yeah, I do have a hard time tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's sort of pushing her nothing you can do about it. So, yeah, yeah she's coming when she gets ready. When she's ready she's she'll be here. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so that doesn't, let's see that. So 285. That's a build line, right? The dotted. This dashed line is their front yard setback. So Build this, line, front yard yep. setback. Bu yeah, the building line. envelope is, is this right. right here. Okay. Now I see in reference to the, the the outer rounded cornered line is that the inside edge of the uh, sidewalk or the curb? That's the curb. This is the curb. Aha! That's the Look curb. where the line goes. The left property line goes all the way to the curb. Yeah. So they own it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Everything I've ever seen and talk about it was you own to the street. When a developer tells you the lots are a quarter acre, they're including that. They're including well, that. Well, they, they are. Because yes. they wouldn't come in here and say. So, so we've clarified that, right? So yeah. With us. Sure. Yeah. And, yeah. But yet, the front yard setback begins at the back of the sidewalk. That is just how a, a yard setback is defined. How, how? You're saying that dotted line is the, the, the inside edge of the sidewalk? This is That's the, the inside, inside edge. edge of the sidewalk. Yeah. I don't know how you determine that by looking at that. That's the way they're always drawn with the inside edge. Okay. C4 stands for conical sidewalk. Oh. So any of those C. Stands for what? Conical sidewalk. Conical. Yes. Don't ask me why. You. That's the limit of my understanding of concrete, why it's called. Four feet concrete. wide? Yeah. Or concrete. That's concrete. It's concrete, four yeah. feet wide. Concrete. Exactly. Well, <laughs> okay. not necessarily four feet wide. We've got. Okay, we C5, C6, three. Oh, okay, yeah, I see. Yeah, whatever the heck that means. Okay. Yeah. <sighs> All right. Okay. All right, no further questions from me. Okay. Someone want to try to craft the motion? One more question. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, you, okay, what? <laughs> Do we, to cover us, although it was stated that it's going to be the, the wrought iron fence or whatever, do we need to put that in there as a condition that it, it or, or is that as, as she testified? No, it's and yeah, submitted. She testified. She yes. submitted and testified. Okay, all right, okay. All right. The fence is as submitted. Okay. All right. So the only thing you need is try with the okay. condition of six feet. Back. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, we already got that by her testimony. 
Right. So, go ahead. under case 82, we approve it as submitted and testified by the owner. Yeah. That's all. Right. Okay. Then we've got her statement that it's going to be at least six feet away from the sidewalk. Okay. We know it's a, a fence and we know it's four foot. A woman fence and four foot. Okay. And that, does that take us to where we wanted to go? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think so. I think so. Okay. Motion's been made. Is there a second? No second. It's been seconded. No further discussion, I believe. Let's go ahead and call for vote. Mr. Martinsek? Yes. Uh, Mr. Hemrich? Yes. Mr. Huntsman? Yes. Mr. Thomas? Yes. Mr. Pete? Yes. All right, thank you, board. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to have to sign this one. I'll write the second one for our record. I don't like it. I, I wish it was a little bit more. <coughs> well, exactly. after they leave, we'll, right. we'll have yeah, a talk amongst us. I think you're able to sign. And then we got to talk comfortable with that. We both can sign to you if it's too far away. This one. Yeah. I wrote there, you know. Because I've never been changed. Never been changed. Off the side. Yeah, just just off sign right here. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. We'll gladly do that. Yeah. So I don't know what, what the, what plan out for Lori. That, or what, plan out for me and what the. Yeah, I was going to say, Lori is usually the one right. that will uh, enforce it. Right. But, uh, so we'll have to just. I'm curious as to what their legal. Because the fencing company was there. Yeah. Yeah. Please go ahead. It's yeah. 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 But when they put fence in. You go out and it's to, you have to go a little ways and then take the right. right. We had some yeah. 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 corner yeah. off so you can see. Because it's solid. Line. It was solid. It was solid fence. Right. And, and it, he didn't agree. He, but that's okay. He, no, no. It was <laughs> only because it was a four way stop sign <laughs> on a cul de sac. And, at 25 mile an hour. There's always got to be one to set up. The bad intersections right down the road from it, Alpha Bellbrook and Angle Road. <laughs> That's the bad one. It was on the cola set. <laughs> sign this one for me. She's just going to sign that set. But that can change, you know. No, it can't. What? You look at the end of it, there's a the retention, the arrows. Uh, the retention <laughs> bottom. <laughs> yeah, it can't change. Yeah. Oh, there's, only, there's only 10 houses on the street or whatever. Yeah. No, this one is not the one with the pond. Right. I find it refreshing you hey, guys Max, agree to disagree. Did you look at that's, the, that's the Google map on the previous? Uh, the Google map on the previous one. We one no, we don't. Agree. The Google map on the previous house. Uh, sorry. Wasn't updated? Right. And his house sits in this retention pond. Oh, it's it's deep. Yeah. Very deep. I, I feel sorry for him. The retention pond got filled in. <sighs> right? You know, I'm unfortunately not familiar with that, whether or not a retention pond was filled in there. It must have been before my time that that All happened. All you have to do is do there, the Google Map. If but you Google Map it, there's a retention pond deep. there, and you yeah. Google Map it now, and it's a house. Yeah. <laughs> Where, where's that? The, the, the previous, previous one. The previous case. A oh, you, I mean, retention pond yeah. Yeah. Out yeah. Exactly. Was on. You can see from the photos he submitted. Right. Just no. how deep. Yeah, yeah. exactly. You how can, deep you can that see. That yard is. Yeah. yeah. Well, is it going to bring it up on his phone? With another one? Or? No, they just filled it in. They're filling it in. So yeah, where's the water going? Yeah. Well, I think. Put it in. I moved it. I think basement. Well, probably in his basement. But I think they, there was a temporary construction oh, for the roads. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Temporary. Yeah. I've never seen a real one move. No. Usually. It's possible. By the time they get all the, all, all the bar, all the drainage and everything is yeah. set up to go there. Yeah. yeah. Check that out. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's the previous one. All right. Oh, oh, wow. One Where for your records. How did you find it? That photo. Went back. When he Googled it, it what came up? Is that right? This is just the Google Maps. Once that's get, get processed uh, and back there, there's there's a lawsuit waiting to happen. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> really. Yeah. 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 There'd be no yeah, way. When you contact Lori, oh. just tell her, hey, I sent in my fence application. You'll know oh. that there was a BZA case involved, and that signals to her. Cool. Should I call her first? Or should I, her first? I would call. Her. Yeah. All right. Thank you for your time. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you for your time. It takes yeah. a long time. Good luck with your settlement. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Congratulations. So are we going to close? Hey. Yes. It's, it's, yeah. She'll be going to college before you know it. Uh, <laughs> believe me. I speak from experience. <laughs> okay. That takes care of the cases that we were supposed to hear. Could we have some uh, open conversation about fence lines? Okay. In back, uh, on the record, yeah, on the record, okay. on the record, yeah. Okay. So, uh, they didn't in that case that we just listened to. They were a hundred percent in the right about placement of the fence. If it were three feet tall. Right. If it were three feet tall. Correct. And the only only request was increasing the height which does not affect the setback of the fence. Is it, it, tell me when I'm wrong. I, I would say so far you're on the ball. <laughs> okay. Okay. The measurement in is, Leonard was pointing out, the measurement usually is from the curb, is it not? Which measurement, sorry? For the setback of the front yard. No. No. Uh, the, the front yards, so, the front yard setback is usually from the concrete of the sidewalk. Of the sidewalk itself? Yes. Okay. And we can look at a number of different neighborhoods and their record plans. I'll show you that that is a standard across. Okay. Okay. Well, they're, they're maybe I'm looking at two different the We're setback. talking just the setback for the fence. The, the, no, the for the setback for the fence or the setback no. for the house. There, okay. Two things. So our code defines. A, the distance between the edge of the curb and where the fence needs to be, let's not call it a setback because I think that's confusing the conversation. Okay. So let's just call that the fence distance to make it easier. The fence distance and the building setback are two different concepts. And I'm, yeah. I'm just trying to clear it up. So the fence distance has to be at least 12 feet from the road the curb on the road, or if it's not a curb and gutter road, it has to be 25 feet from the center line of that road that it abuts. That is what our resolution says. Our resolution also says that within a f required front yard setback, which has its own definition within the code, a fence cannot exceed a height of three feet. Both of these cases, the only thing that was outside of code conformity was the height within the front yard setback. Both fences were located at least 12 feet away. They were located the correct fence the fence distance away or or further. But I think all bets are off if they go for a height variance. I, I think it would have been good to recommend that they were at least 12 feet from the sidewalk. I, exactly. I'll say that. Because looking at the other fences, that's what they are. I'm, I'm confused. What, what, what's the code say for a uh, uh, distance between sidewalk and fence? It doesn't. It, it does says not from specify curb distance to curb, curb, curb to fence. Now I'm, I'm really getting confused. <laughs> no, no. The 1806-3A. That, that's exactly what I'm saying. I, I, we take it from the curb. But he's just saying no from the, se from the, from the distance curb. between the sidewalk and the fence. No, that's it's a house stayed. setback. That's okay. it. Okay, sure. folks, the setback line, there's a build line or a setback line on a, on, a, you know, on a corner lot or any other lot. You can't build the building except on one side of that line. And okay? Th that's the, fence, the fence line is different yeah. than the building setback right. line. Right, and where is that measured from? The piece yeah. saying from the sidewalk. Well, the, the, the fence the line is measured from the curb, it's and the yard. building setback line is measured from the edge of the sidewalk. They're both measured from two different points. Correct. Yes. Yeah. That's the problem. And I don't, I don't make those rules. That is just how it is written in our code. I, I had no hand in crafting that. Uh, so. so Though the, the distance from the street of the curb can be different in any given plat, right? It can. It's usually about 12 feet because all, most of our uh, residential neighborhoods are these 
plan unit developments and they have very uniform streets and curves and all that thing. It's usually about 12 feet. So our code says they can build a fence if the inside line of that sidewalk is at 12 feet. Exactly. Three feet tall. They can build a fence touching that sidewalk. Yes. Three feet tall. Like yeah. this one, which is about six inches away from the edge of the sidewalk. And it is three feet tall. Okay. And it is completely legal. It's completely conforming to the zone. Now, resolution. getting back to putting the condition on that it be at least six feet off the Side inside of the curve was just going to be a safety net for our zoning code enforcement officer. is the only reason why I would have put a condition on there because they can now go put that fence right at the edge of that sidewalk and you can go back and listen to all the recordings I guess and everything but that doesn't get the fence. I don't know how we couldn't have required 12 feet from the sidewalk when a case before we made them angle the fence, remember the one? Oh yeah. And they could have technically had a three foot there and we gave them the four feet providing they cut that angle off. So why couldn't we have made 12 feet? I don't understand why. Well, and, and we could have, but then she said they got into an issue with the trees. Uh, I'm not sure on that. I I, at I, I, I understand. I, I was yeah. really toiling with yeah. asking her if it's possible to move the fence farther back, but, but, but then you got the neighbor across the street from her on the front, on the yeah. Yeah. So he, he was right on the sidewalk, and this guy over here, she already said that she didn't want to go back that far. Now, but, so but again, like, get, just getting to, back to what, what we're here for, we're here to go with what the case states. And if they're asking for a variance for just the height, and, they're tell, and they're, they tell us that the fence is within the, di the stated distance, re acceptable distance, Required, you said back. So yeah. the only thing that we can actually rule on is, it, it is the, the height. Sure. Except maybe in cases of safety, where if they're going to go right. a, a, a four foot uh, high fence, solid privacy fence, that close, we can say no, and you can't use uh, that material. No, that's, that's what conditions are for. Yeah. Wouldn't it be That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. We could put, we could tell them that we have a reason to say no. Right. If you're going to put conditions on, you're basically stating that if you don't follow these conditions and agree to them, we're not going to approve Proof. it. Exactly. Would, would it so be a safety it, issue that if they put that fence next to the sidewalk that's the bars with two German shepherds on the inside and a little kid walking on the but outside? That's a code issue. The code people wrote the code and said no. You got to realize if they yeah, say that you're saying a safety issue, we cut a fence off for a safety issue, right? Right. If the if the code states they could put it right next to the, the sidewalk, Three we can we can we can't tell them not to put it. They can't do it. I, I think I kind of think, think we, we can condition it. I, I, my opinion. I think we've done similar things. That, that's that's what I wanted to do. The condition was as as to, to, to guarantee that it was going to be as far away as she said it would be. Yes. You know, there's no guarantee, nobody's holding a gun to her head that she's going to do that. Yeah, right. Yeah, but, you know, we, we have to... That, how about... How any about, conditions, any conditions, if you get right down to it, any conditions could be a waste of time. Well, unless I, it's enforced. I, it's it. So, I know, I so know that, one right now. I know two. Yeah. When I, we did for that uh, yeah. workout place there off of... Uh, still don't yes. have a light. And yeah. still, no still, light. still no light there. Yeah. Yeah. And what's our recourse on 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 that? Know, that's that's, my, that's yeah. another question I had. Yeah. Okay. 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 Could could we ask the uh, for a change or recommend a change that instead of reading closer than twelve foot from the back of the curb, that it's actually from the sidewalk? That it. I think for the most part, I see what you're trying to do and I think we could get it to work but there are many neighborhoods that don't have a sidewalk that's fine and so we would need to have that there's ways we'd have to workshop it I don't see why we couldn't try and change it to say so far away from a sidewalk okay I mean, or go closer than six foot to a sidewalk 
Yeah. Or yeah, or something. And here's another safety issue about a fence like this. You put it right on the sidewalk, and the kid's going by slow on his bike. He could stick his arm between some of those rungs, oh, yeah. and oh, yeah. his arm tore completely off of it. Yeah. 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 You know, and you, you're not going to tell me that a German Shepherd's not going to put his paws up on a four-foot fence and stick his head over? My brother. My brother. Yeah. Brother got bit by a a, a boxer. Yeah. Similar situation. Come right up, put it over. Yeah. Brother was on the side. And he could stick her snout through the right through through the or yeah, his arm. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. And I mean, while I agree with all that, one thing to take note is that there's a whole suite of laws and, and things that would that would preclude people from taking those risks. For the most part, people are aware that if they let their dog roam in a dangerous manner and it bit someone that they're financially and morally oh, and all. And I just, I just hate to see it happen to begin with. I agree. I totally agree with you. you I know. just mean like, I guess what I'm saying is what we're doing in concert with all the other restrictions and laws on the books and whatever, you know, we can take all of that into account a little bit and say, you know, if it's six feet back, most people's common sense would say that they wouldn't then walk up to that fence if there was a dog hanging out of it. Most people. I'm not in total everybody. agreement with it being six feet back. I'm yeah. not in agreement with it being against the sidewalk. You, you know, what, what may help? That's it help. All. Not just something like this, but overall. I've been on here, I'm probably one of the young ones. You're, you've been a little bit less. But going on six years now, we see a lot of the same things coming for us after variances. It would be nice if once a year, twice a year, whatever it has to do, that we could sit down with the people from the zoning uh, board and everything say, this is what we're seeing. These are the variances that we have to be issuing because we really don't have a good reason not to. Let's take a look and see should there be a, a change in the code to help deal, deal with situations that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, the, the, because back to the precedence word definition again or whatever, we are in essence setting the precedence even though precedences don't have any worth in this township. Right. It does it to the neighbor who came in to speak on his behalf saying, hey, you approved it for me, now you should prove it, approve it for him. But you, so, I mean, it, <laughs> you did the same thing for me. <laughs> see what they I say. know. So, and we're approving one, every building. I don't, that comes I in. mean, I would be glad to bring it to the higher ups, but their blessing is not required. You guys can say, I want to meet with the zoning commission, and if the zoning commission agrees to come with, meet with you, that's all that we need to do. I think it'd be, I think, I would think be they good. would. I think they would be glad to meet with you and understand because what you are they get are they given any information from what our rulings are? So to give you an idea of what's already taking place to kind of address this. Our omnibus update is actually going before the Zoning Commission on the 7th of October. It's, a, it's written in our code that it should happen at least once a year, that the zoning resolution is reviewed for these kind of issues. It has not been done that way. So when did the, when did the drainage, building no, nothing in the swales and drainage ditches get repealed? All, maybe all of two months after it was And uh, Who repealed it? The same township trustees that passed it. Because we found, and I'd be glad to tell you, we found that we were not going to get the support that we had originally thought we were going to get from the engineer's office and no. soil and water and administering the, the issue. Okay. So the township was not ready to take all of the heat from all of the people that we were going to deny based on this. Right. And, okay. and so we said, okay, if you're not willing to take the stand with us, then we're not going to die on this hill. Right. So that's right. why it was repealed. Okay. Um, Personally, I still think it's it's very important to protect these drainage ditches, and we're going to see problems because we had to repeal them. But it is what it is. The omnibus update does address a couple of things that you see on a regular basis. Oh, yeah. um, the size of accessory structures is now a function of percentage of lot size. Uh, impervious surface coverage essentially is how we are trying to look at the use of an individual parcel. Because it is ridiculous for someone to have five acres and to have to apply for variance to put a 1,000 square foot barn on their five acres. I agree. So that's something that we tried to address in the omnibus update. That process should have been happening every year, forever. 
and I don't, I believe the last, I don't know that there's ever been an omnibus update done on the zoning resolution. There's been a number of piecemeal updates from time to time. That's something that I'm working on changing. Um, once this process is established a little bit better, and we've updated a lot of the, the stuff that's needed attention for many years, then each year will function very much like you're suggesting, where you and the Zoning Commission get together in a couple of work sessions and discuss what needs or doesn't need to change from the Zoning Commission, make recommendations to me, I submit that to regional planning. Yeah. It, it would really, being a two-way street would really help. We would tell them this is what we're seeing, and they would tell us this was the intent that we were looking for when we, we made the, uh, the codes. And it, it, may, it may help us, to, you know, why are you restricting it this way? What's the, what's the reasoning that you're doing that? That is one of the hardest parts of any zoning employee's job is to try and guess at the intentions of someone 30 or 40 years ago who developed the bones of this code. We can only do our best to interpret it, you know, once we've come to an interpretation of our code, we try to stick to it and apply that uniformly across, you know, any situation. But I agree, the zoning code is sometimes ambiguous, no question. Um, and so working together with the Zoning Commission, I think is a great idea to kind of further both of your understanding of the code and where it could be improved. I like that suggestion. I'd be glad to, to work on putting that together. I th if the other members don't have any issue with it, uh, no, no, no. I think I think it, it, it could pay for itself. I absolutely agree. Um, I think probably around, well, um, part of the other issue is we've had quite a bit of zoning activity as you've seen. There's been a lot of developments. So it's difficult to try and get, like the Zoning Commission every month has site plans and omnibus updates and all these things in front of them. It's been difficult to find time to even do a work session with them that I've been wanting to hold, update them on new zoning philosophies and new case law and some of these other things that I think they need to understand as well. But if I try to ask them to meet once every month for a difficult meeting and then again for a special meeting, We've already lost one to attrition, essentially. We've already lost one person who's just like, can't do it anymore. Too much. Not what I signed up for. So I, there's competing forces here. Not saying it's not something I've wanted to do and thought about. It's been difficult logistically to put it together. Well, I think once a year would be yeah. sufficient. Like and maybe a, whenever a slow time might be, if there is such a thing in the dead of winter. Or That's exactly when I would suggest it would be yeah. the start of each year, roughly January, um, following the holiday yeah. season, to come back. Yeah, just a, just sort of almost a refresher for I think all of us and them. And one thing I would recommend to you all is to come on the 7th and listen into the Zoning Commission session and hear my presentation about the omnibus update and why certain things were changed and why they're not, and listen to that discussion on you know our philosophy on about the yeah here October seventh right here at six o'clock six yes six p.m. which October second October seventh seventh you said seventh seventh the seventh. first Thursday of October and what time I'm uh, sorry seventh second I keep uh, saying seventh second the second October second on Saturday isn't it it's the first Thursday so it is so it's the seventh seventh, You're seventh. why. <coughs> it is seventh. It's October 6th, my birthday, and that's Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> You're pretty sure of that, aren't you? Seventh. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no. what day is it? Um, just so, yeah, know the date this Saturday. That's <laughs> the first Thursday of each month. I'm not excited Saturday. about it at all. Boy. Well, well, it's, it's good seven. to have birthdays. Okay, yeah. October 6 7th, 7. 6 o'clock here. Correct, right? Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh. Um, Fire station. 61, is it? 62. Right? One. 61. Oh, 61? Mm -hmm. Yep. Very good. And I have a question about the fire station when we hit. Where's Randy when you need him? <laughs> yeah, I may or may not be able to answer. I know, you might be able to, but I don't know if right now is the time to ask you or not. Why is it called Station 65 or Station 64? 
Yeah. What's the six designation? So uh, it's a county thing. Yeah. Each fire station or each um, department in the county is given a number. For example, okay. Xenia is three. Okay. Beaver Creek is six. Okay. Because the, when they had the dedication, they kept re referring to the new fire station as fire station five. Correct. Fire station five. But on the building it says 65. 65. Right. So for us in the department, uh, so it's I've, just easier okay. to abbreviate to a lot of times you'll hear us refer to them as ones, twos, threes, fours, or fives. Okay. But it's countywide, it's 61, yeah. 62. Okay. Rather Fair than warms. whatever. Yeah, whatever yeah. they Okay. <laughs> All right. I learned something today. Yeah. Yeah, this is yeah. great. <laughs> you were the same thing. Uh, you? You kept, All right. They kept saying Fire Station 5. And I'm thinking, did you hear that right? Yeah. Fire <laughs> Station 5. <laughs> All right. Okay, thank you. Are we already on thank topic you number two? Pardon? Topic number two. Yes. Yeah. So, why is there no light on the, the exercise? Bombers. Bombers? Yeah. Do they consider that uh, reflector thing that? They, I thought they put a, a, a solar light on, on, on something. On their sign? On their sign or something. Oh. No, I'm, I'm, no it's okay. I, I had a feeling that it would come up. Um, so I printed out the resolution from that case. I had Lori dig it up. Um, it's a conditional use case. Uh, you put five conditions on it. And the first one is that the entrance ensures maximum visibility and is lighted during times of limited visibility during hours of operation. That's how it's working. They did install a light. I'm not, I'll be the first one to agree that it is a piddly little light. It's not a bright halogen light but it is a light and it's difficult to argue that they don't meet this criteria of being lighted during times of limited visibility during the hours of operation. Mm -hmm. uh, if this board feels it is not adequate, I would just want to ask what part of that you feel is not being adequately met because I will at least need to have a reason. I, I was the one that made the, the, the condition. And everybody in the room understood that it was supposed to be a bright light that people could, coming down the road, could identify if there was a car sitting there in the driveway ready to come out. You tell me it was a light they've got right now. Okay. It doesn't. I mean, I go no, by. It does not. I go through now, there at 6 a.m. Stand And again. Yeah. If and everybody standard, knew that. Well, this gets into, I think, the question you were asked earlier about whether or not we set the condition or not. And so if that was said in the minutes, then that's something I can go on and say, look, whether or not you feel you've met this, the minutes made it very clear that a certain standard would be met, and that was the one. Could you approach them with the fact that the only reason for the light, the light concern and condition, was to light the intersection of their parking lot to the street, and that the light that they have up is not lighting the yeah, intersection. It does. I mean, and again, please don't, don't take this as me nitpicking, you guys. I'm not. No, I'm trying not. to help. No, I'm we're trying to help it. myself enforce this. But hey, technically, cool. it says that the entrance. It does not say yeah. the entrance to the parcel. It could be the entrance to the building. I'm again. I know what your guys' intentions likely were. It was probably made very clear during the hearing. So, we'll but be if all even I looked at is this, yeah. in future, absolutely, I we'll put conditions on everything. You know, the, and the crazy thing is, is that I had made comment about um, the building that case, the building. Mingling with the surrounding buildings and colors, and Don Frick leaned forward and said, "You can't tell them what color the building's to be or what it's to look like." And I was like, "Really?" Mm -hmm. I, and I specifically said, "You mean to tell me they can cover that in OSB and paint it hot pink?" And she said, "Yes." And yeah, I right. sat back in my chair and I thought, mm -hmm. "Holy mackerel!" Yeah, Downshift now we're in the city. We could. Yeah. <laughs> Not in the township. Something else that I think needs to be looked at. 
when we meet with the well Ohio revised code does not permit townships to make those kind of aesthetic the Ohio revised code yeah, it's controls it's that yes yeah. and yeah. us yeah. so so the township is a permissive form of government meaning we are only allowed to do what the Ohio revised code tells us we are allowed to do yeah, but the city the city is essentially the opposite. They can do anything that the Ohio Revised Code doesn't specifically tell them they can't do. Hmm. Okay, that just covers that one. Yeah. Uh, how about has, has anybody talked to uh, the bombers people about that? So, since we had this meeting tonight, I wanted to get everyone's opinion. I think I personally believe that if I reach out and speak to them, that I think it should be with no issue that they understand they need to light that area better. Now that I understand that in the minutes it was very clearly mentioned that there was the standard set, I can go and find that. I can point to it in the minutes and say, look, you were there. I wasn't, but you were. Here's your you know, name in the, in the attendee list. So you heard this. You understand what it needs to be. Let's get it fixed within a month or whatever length of time we find appropriate. Sure. I imagine that I won't get fought on that, but if I do, unfortunately, the recourse is to take them to court. That is the only recourse. That's the only recourse you have in any issue, it, isn't that's it? That's correct. The dirty secret of zoning is that if people really want to be belligerent, yeah, they take are. us to court. Yeah. And that is the la that's the re only real power we have is to bring it to the fireborn prosecutor and say they are violating our zoning code. We don't get to make actual laws. As have they ever taken any, anybody to court that huh. you know of? I've testified a half dozen times. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Okay. S Stephen Thaler? Huh? Stephen Thaler. Oh, not only Stephen Thaler, but uh, over over off of uh, Ludlow. Woodgear. Oh, yeah. 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 Woodgear. Um, Woodgear. Uh, yeah. C-Max. Oh, C-Max. Really? C-Max. Yeah. Really? Yep. Oh no, no. It, every every three or four years, I get I get to go to court. <laughs> the I mean, in the township. Yeah. yeah. The, oh the, yeah. Yeah. We were it arguably is. close to court with the zoning commission eight twenty one. Um, that case was contentious. It was, you what know, eight could have gone. Yeah. What was the, that? the McIntyre farm zoning. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That could have easily gone to court. Oh yeah. A yeah. couple There's, of different they things. Went different. They went to the city, right or not. They have not submitted any kind of application for annexation yet. I can tell you that the Beaver Creek wetlands did acquire their 58 acres. So that sale went through. So that's good. We're happy there. Yeah, so it wasn't donated like. It was, well, so. It was a deal. It, it's yeah, a deal. It's, it's a deal. deal. It's it a was, free mud hole. It ought to be a deal. It was more <laughs> donated than sold. I, I would say my understanding of the deal that it was more of a don donation than a sale. They but there was money change. Uh, uh, more than there's nothing thousand. else you could do with it. No, no, more than fifty thousand. And it makes it look like the acreage. Yeah, yeah. And we and the township provided sparse. some of that. They they yeah, they yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. And that's for. I mean, I think we can all agree. Beaver Creek Wetlands Associates going to take better care of that than a developer. So I think that's huge. Hundred homes on fifty acres, not a hundred. That's exactly what they they all do. Oh yeah, they all do. Oh, that was sneaky. All right. Okay. Now, it, it, go ahead. River, Riverside. Uh, I got it right no, here. No, not River's Edge. Or, uh, Riverstone. Riverstone Court. We had a case a few months back. Uh, yes. And they they were supposed to trim a corner. You're saying that you don't think it was trimmed properly. It, not it's trimmed. No. Hasn't been touched. No, it hasn't been touched. Hasn't been touched. I was just there. Okay. They were supposed to lop off the corner. Right, right after the gate, and then cut it off at an angle. Yep. And and the fence guy you was here. Problem, goes, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. hey, I know I'll one the, it should be done. I'll be the first one uh, to tell you that that something that upsets me after yeah, yeah. 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 they yeah. Were, after it was made very clear to them that the only reason you were granting their variance that the of the fence they had already built correct out of code was to do this thing. Yes. It's very upsetting to hear that it has not been done. Yet. And Bellbrook Fence Company was here. I figured they were going to move right away. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I'm surprised they didn't. You can guarantee that tomorrow I'll be reaching out to that homeowner. Okay. Now, yeah, all I can tell you is on a day to day basis, looking at various zoning infractions that 
we aren't made aware of via complaint is not my responsibility. Not some not to right. say that I don't occasionally do that. Right. So being unaware of that, I apologize. It's something that definitely needs to be fixed. Hey, when safety. you're out and about over in that neck of the woods, mm -hmm. are you familiar with, or has Lori ever said anything to you about the fellow over on um, Alpha Dub where it comes down and turns and goes south? He's got a bunch of RVs in his lot? Yeah. Yeah. Are you aware of the fence that he's put up? Uh, I visited that lot or maybe, his neighbor, one of the two, maybe has got roughly a, a month ago. It's a fence, and the top board is at least eight feet up in the air. Now he's only got the three rails on. Well, but it's depending it, on it comes over six feet, and then it goes up to about eight or ten feet. And I'm thinking, we do allow eight and ten uh, up. I think it's eight. And I have to look at our codes, it's not here. a section we look at a lot. But I think we allow up to eight around a tennis court or a pool. Well, he doesn't have either one of those. Six on the pool. <laughs> it's six on pool, but uh, eight on the tennis court. Tennis court, that's what yeah. okay. and, and what is, And what is the status of that guy? Because he still has RVs parked there and a gravel lot put in. And So I spoke with that. So it's not the same guy you're thinking of, the guy who apparently tried to turn it one of the lots into an RV. Now, I wasn't here for this, but I kind of heard the story after right. dealing with this. Different gentleman just bought this house. I spoke with him. According to him, he is storing those RVs for his friends. I know. <laughs> Trust me. It doesn't work either, does it? No. It, as far as our code is concerned, yes, it does. Yeah. Because they are RVs. RVs are allowed to be stored in your yard. As long as they're, they're licensed. Up to date, right? You cannot discriminate against an RV. A licensed now. RV. But it has to be licensed, right? It has to be licensed, absolutely. But I can't go out here and buy a piece of property in the township and put up a big pole barn and tell you I'm going to store RVs in it. You, you can't do it as a business. At, uh, advertise as a business. Exactly. Uh, so and you can't uh, charge uh, correct. That's right. You can let friends put them in there for free. That's you correct. Can. And they can give you donations. <laughs> donations. And look. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, okay. Facetious. Really, really but sarcastic. As I <laughs> looked at it, the only too. issue he has is that Airstream. Now, a camper, a trailer that's not capable of moving under its own power, that needs to be stored in a building. Uh, not true. It has to be stored in a building. I'm telling you. It has, it has they've to taken be, that to the Supreme Court. Well, at least our, that, sorry, our code, our code specifies and that. And your code, really? it, it cannot... I, I'm telling you a case. Oh, yeah, I believe our code has sections that are no I'm longer you, legally enforced. Absolutely, absolutely legally enforced. Believe that. Yep. I had which an uncle is, that had That's a, discrimination, isn't it? It's well, exactly right. <laughs> which is why we're not enforcing anything on that property. <laughs> I had an uncle that had a travel trailer. He parked next to his house in Mad River for 30 years. He had a different one. And they, they became a city, and they gave him a notice he, he could not keep it there anymore. Yeah. And that's so something. he asked my dad if he could bring it out to his place. And my dad said, sure. He goes, but they can't make you move it. If you get Trailer Life magazine here, they took it to Supreme Court. It's licensed. You can't discriminate against it. They took it to Supreme Court. Yeah. Uh, Sam's Club. They took okay. it to Supreme Court. And, and they won. Yeah. It's, you can't discriminate against a licensed vehicle. You can't. But if they, they don't so. maintain the license. Tell, tell the city of Beaver Creek that. Yeah. yeah. Now, you can have covenants that... Covenants are different now. Yeah, but we don't enforce covenants. We don't do that. That's yeah, right. that used to be a civil. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, All right. Thank you. Well, that's. You know, well, check we're out. We're going to close just the meeting. That we'll yeah. Just check that out. You'll you'll see it. If you were to turn on the uh, South Alabama Bellbrook, where it makes that ninety degree turn, becomes swagger. Uh, yeah, becomes swagger. Thank you. Uh, if you look to the west, you'll see this great big fence that's way up in the air. It's close to where the guy had and it's, it. And I think it's on his property line. Well, maybe, maybe uh, they're growing. Uh, oh, yeah. You say roughly at the intersection of. Well, there's nothing growing on it at all. You <laughs> <laughs> say it's roughly at the intersection of what well, roads, camera. please? Swagger and Alpha. 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 Yeah, I think we're talking about the same. Or at least his name. It's very close. Yes. Very close to the fellow that put it on the gravel. To, he was going to fix RVs there or something at one time and store some. And people, farmers who wanted to raise pheasants for all right. Well, while we're talking about problem sites, uh, anything more with Spurgeon's at the end of Kingsway? Because he now has nine cars in his yard. 
Oh, the glue manufacturer yeah, guy? Yeah, glue manufacturer first. And, and all that all over the road that he spilled? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, he got this lines all down and around, and he did a loop de do and come back, and it all dribbling out on the road. Yeah. Must oh, be yeah. glue or something. I'm sure you love that brand. Um, what is the deal with that guy? How's he getting away with that? All I can tell you is ever since I came here, literally day one, Lori was showing me around the township, and she made a point to be like, look at this guy. He's yeah. obviously running a business out of his house, and there's nothing we can do about it. We can't, as zoning, nothing that he's doing necessarily violates our zoning code, unfortunately. And what we suspect him of doing, which is, like you said, chemical manufacturer, we cannot enter the property in any way, shape, or form without being asked to verify that. What we have done, according to Lori, was check and see if there's any businesses registered to that address. And we think that there is. We brought it to Fairborn Prosecutor's Office and asked what can be done here. They referred us back. They said, you know who you need to talk to is the EPA. Because they're the ones that can go and say, oh, he's maybe poisoning the ground underneath of what he's doing improperly. So I don't know if you know this, but the EPA is not super interested in one guy no. maybe making glue, No, unfortunately. They're interested in huge corporations. They're interested in right. bigger fish. And so yeah. that's where our efforts were stymied once we got to, you should take it to the EPA. How about all the vehicles parked all around? Is it, that's okay? It's permittable? As long as they as long are, as they're licensed? as long as they are licensed and operable, yeah. So yeah. Just like the guy on the end of Ankeny, you know. Yeah. He's got a bunch of cars in the lot. Yeah. Wasn't Wasn't he going to build a garage or something? Did I, he combine he, the lots? He did. Right the lots. He did. He's, if they got to be licensed, that red Camaro in his yard is not licensed. Lori wanted me to let you know that the letter went out. Okay, because I I told her that for two years. He combined the lots. That that. Uh, that red Camaro, oh, I don't see a red Camaro. You can't miss it. It has no headlights in it, no wheels on it. That letter did go out. She wanted me to make sure you knew that. So I'm glad See, he's going to be coming in one of these days wanting to combine those two lots. We he already, already got did it. combine them. He's, Pardon? He's already combined them. He didn't need a variance or anything. Right. So they're combined into one lot. He has the ability to build that right now if he wanted to build a garage on it. Build what? What size? I mean, as far as I'm aware, I mean, he'd have to apply for a variance right now for anything over 900 square feet. Okay. But here in hopefully the end of October, I'd have to do some calculations, but it would be significantly bigger than that. I mean, I don't know his lot size and stuff, but it would be a percentage of that. Essentially. Well, he's going to need one to, to help his friends with, with the free maintenance he's going to be doing. He does, he does free oil changes? Oh, yeah. No, he, he does, does, he does R &R's. every day. Yeah, he, and you know he's not getting paid for it. Oh, heavens no. Yeah, okay. I honestly think what he's doing is he, he, he's fixing those cars up and turning them. He's he's buying one that needs an engine or something, putting an engine in it, and he's reselling it. Yeah, okay. Is what I think he's doing with it. Okay. Right. I'll make a motion we close the meeting. Or, uh, uh, you know, first, thank you good. for, you know, vetting all of our questions because... <laughs> One more question on the RV, the traders of the RVs. Is, is there no rules or regulations on how they're supposed to be parked in your yard? There are. Um, I'd need to look at it to give you the exact language, but I believe it amounts to they have to be no closer than 10 feet to a setback, I believe. Okay. So they can be parked right. in the grass, no yeah. pad, yeah. no yeah. nothing. Right. They can be parked right on your grass. They can, yep. As long okay. as they're not any closer than 10 feet to a property line. Cool. So I'm just yeah. parking my trailers in the front yard then. You can. You absolutely can. I mean, you it's can. tacky. No. I, I wouldn't do it, it, but you could. I saw in the city of Beaver Creek parked in this side yard in the grass. Yeah. I, I do see them. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, even in the city. So, Well, they, they tried years ago to do concrete pads at first, yeah. and then they just then they backed it down to they'll do, they want your trailer on, or your RV on gravel. Yeah. Yeah. Angle, right? But City now, Beaver Creek. But now they went back to. No, what did they tell you when you wanted to put that gravel off to the side of the garage at your boy's house? Didn't he tell you that you couldn't do it no, or something? No, or it had no. to be concrete? Or Now it has to be concrete or pavers or blacktop. Oh, okay. If you want to put a little addition to your driveway. Hmm. But it still doesn't say you can't put a gravel trail right, around your right. grass. <laughs> yeah. But I think in the city you have to you have to have it on at least gravel or they frown. I don't 
Do I hear a motion? I make a motion we adjourn. I second it. I third it. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Never. All right. Never. <laughs> <laughs>